Why are plane wings angled backwards? Today most planes have a swept wing design and this helps the plane fly faster, but it wasn't always this way. Let's look back in time and learn how this technology was developed and what we learned in the process. Back in 1941, most planes were designed with a straight wing, and the Lockheed P-38 Lightning was no different. The straight wing design works well at lower speeds, but the P-38 was not a slow plane, and its engineers quickly discovered that the plane had major control issues in high speed dives. On November 5th, 1941, a Lockheed test pilot by the name of Ralph Verdon died when he lost control of his aircraft. This spurred a major investigation headed by an engineer called John Stack. He employed a special type of photography called Schlieren photography to observe the airflow in a high speed wind tunnel. And this is what he saw. As air passes over the wing, the air over the top of the airfoil accelerates. This is how the wing generates lift. This means that a wing traveling at less than the speed of sound can actually develop areas of localized flow traveling faster than the speed of sound, and shockwaves form at these locations. These shockwaves will reduce the lift and increase the drag on the wing. The speed at which shockwaves begin to appear is called the critical Mach number, and Ralph Verdon reached this speed during his high speed test dive, so why did this cause a crash? As the speed of his plane increased even further, the airflow from the surface of the wing separated due to the shockwave formation. This separated flow actually increased the lift on the tail wing, and this combined with the reduced lift on the wing caused the P-38 to enter an even deeper dive, one that was very difficult to escape from. John Stack solved this problem in 1943 by placing a special flap under the wing, where the flow was not being affected by the shock waves. This flap could be deployed during dives and would increase the lift on the wing to maintain proper pitch control. Over the next decade, John continued his work in the development of supersonic flight, and was a major driving force for the development of the Bell X-1, which was the first manned vehicle to break through the sound barrier in 1947. The Bell X-1 was a rocket-powered plane, and its fuselage was modelled after a 50 caliber round, which was known to be stable in supersonic flight. Its engineers increased the critical Mach number of the plane by using a very thin wing, and avoided the pitch control issues of the P-38 by raising the tail wing up and out of the downstream airflow of the wing, but this plane still had a straight wing, the realization that the swept wing may hold the key for high-speed flight came at the end of World War II. In 1951, the Bell X-5 was released, and its design was mostly based on a captured German prototype. The Bell X-5 had the special ability to change its sweep angle during flight, making it the perfect test object to investigate the aerodynamic advantages of the swept wing. Let's compare the aerodynamics of the straight-wing Bell X-1 and the Bell X-5 as it increases its sweep angle. Air over a straight wing will flow parallel to the cord only. This is called the cordwise flow, the air that accelerates and creates lift. As explained earlier, it is this acceleration that reduces the critical Mach number of the plane. Now let's look at the flow over the Bell X-5 as it increases its sweep angle. A swept wing introduces a new component of flow, the spanwise flow. This flow runs along the length of the wing and does not accelerate, and thus does not affect the critical Mach number. By converting some of the airflow into spanwise flow, the acceleration of air over the cord is reduced. This means the plane can fly faster before shockwaves begin to form over the wing. As the plane increased in speed, the pilot could increase the sweep angle. Doing this converted a larger volume of air into spanwise flow, and thus increased the critical Mach number even more. This test proved that the swept wing design could delay the formation of shockwaves, and thus allow planes to fly faster. So next time you're flying, take a look out the window and admire the engineers of the early 20th century. Their designs have allowed us to travel across the globe at transonic speeds, and hopefully soon regular citizens may break through the sound barrier once again. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about the mechanics of the swept wing, click on my website here. For my next video, I'll be discussing the design of wind turbines. Please subscribe and like our Facebook page below.